Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing good. Today we are going to talk about setting up shift cut, typically for either a dog box or a sequential. Theoretically, you could use it on a synchro transmission, but that's not really recommended because of the time frames involved. But we are talking about something like this, whether you have it in the knob, you can see the wire coming out. Uh, some shifters, sequential specifically, will have it in the base. But we have what is called a strain gauge. And we use that 5 volt signal to make an interrupt or to make a signal to tell the ECU, whatever one we're using, because they all do it, uh, to interrupt ignition. Sometimes we can have a timing ramp in, ramp out. We're going to see that. Uh, the idea is that there's no clutch involved. You just yank the shifter, go to the next gear. There's no torque applied to the gear. The dog does the work. It's a race situation. That's why it's not good on synchros. You will destroy a synchro transmission. Um, but let's get to the tech. So we're going to open handy dandy Infinity Software. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is if you look up in the left corner here, or right corner, under shift switch, that's where our 5 volt input is coming in. So, right now, even though I'm driving and I'm actually in a pole, 5500 RPM, you can see that those numbers are zeroed out. If you look down at analog 11 on the left corner, shows two and a half volts. That's basically its resting voltage. If I get a little bit more specific, we can see what the exact voltage is to get an idea why these numbers ended up the way they did. So resting position is 2.54 volts. I think I was seeing 2.6 on average. Right here we have 2.2, 2.3, and immediately to each side, very very close we're within a hundredth of a volt what that does is this establishes our neutral window where the shift cut is not going to become active and then this is the sides where it's active either up or down in this particular case we're going to see a third gear to fourth gear shift so the lever is going to be pulled backwards towards fourth that means all of the force is on the back side of the shift knob. So as we start to ramp up, we get to where I decided I was going to make the shift. We're getting closer. I was doing it, I'm not going to say full power, but I was definitely doing it a fair amount of power, 30 pounds boost. It was a 6870 car. We made, made decent horse. I think this is 700 horsepower. So right here is where I'm going to start the, sh the actual shift. The timer is 10.27, and watch what happens. So, number one, we see that the switch is active. I put enough force on the strain gauge in that knob to make it go into shift cut mode. That activates a timer. This particular one I had set kind of slow because I didn't know how good the driver is. It's his first dog box, so we set it at 190 milliseconds. You can actually set this lower if they know how to shift. Um, not saying he didn't, but if he really railed on it, you could get this down to 100 milliseconds, 125 milliseconds. You do risk potential damage if the shift does not happen. Transmission already thinks it's in fourth gear. The RPM is starting to drop. We, sh we see the shift switch shows active. Shift cut spark. I cut spark. It is active. I didn't have the shift timing retard data logging on this particular one, but we can go see it in a, the next page. But we, we can see that the, the shift is happening. And then we're going to see the other side of that. The RPM is starting to come back up. The boost is starting to come back up. So I shifted at 7,000, it dropped to 5,200. Again, I wasn't racing, it was on the dyno, it was just a check, but you get the idea. And then 
the switch is no longer active, it's back to its resting voltage. And I go a little bit longer into the pole and then shut off. So if we move up a page, we're going to back up just right before the shift again. We can see that it hasn't started to, to go active yet. We do have values populated. We have the rolling trim, but that's not being used. And then as it starts to go active, you can see that it's pulling 10 degrees of timing. It's anticipating it. So it's dropping torque. It makes the cut. And then reinstates and the timing ramps back out. So now we're going to switch to the screen, in this case in the infinity, to show the parameters for setting something like this up. So under wizards, under advanced setup, you have a tab for shift cut. So it does have some basic stuff to set it up. 5000 RPM in this case is what I chose for a minimum RPM to allow it to do it. Then that way in normal driving, he's not likely to accidentally turn it on. Throttle, 70%. You could set these up to whatever your rev range is. Maybe your car doesn't rev that high. You don't need it to be that high. Shift cut, rearm, delay time. This is the maximum amount of time that has to transpire before you can make another shift. Most of the time you're going to be in gear for at least 200 milliseconds between shifts. Depending on your gear ratios, maybe you're not, so you might need to lower that down. Shift cut method, I recommend at least spark cut. You have to have a cut. You can't just do ignition retard only. That won't work correctly. Um, maybe if you pulled a ton of timing, but then the car's just not going to recover correct. You could do fuel cut. I did spark cut because then that way when it comes back, it's a little loaded on fuel, but we're going to get a slight anti-lag effect. Uh, typically, keep the boost up. And it's fast enough that it's not going to really load up. We could do full if you want, but in that case, it's ignition retard and spark cut, which is what I normally do. Ignition retard amount and then ramp out time. So as we saw, it was pulling 10 degrees. Pulled it down to 10 degrees. Or, excuse me, it pulled it down 10 degrees, not... 2, 10 degrees. Took 10 degrees out. You can set that higher if you want. You could go 20, whatever you need to do. The ramp out time is from starting of the event to end, which we saw that it was pulling timing and then slowly starts to add it back in. So all that happened in 100 milliseconds according to the ECU. And again, you can change that if you need it to be a little bit longer. For whatever reason a little bit shorter you don't even have to use it but in the interests of keeping things safe i chose to do that now if you had a drive-by-wire throttle you could use this in conjunction with the drive-by-wire throttle blip that is also a uh, option it's not one that i have done yet so you have a bunch of stuff to set up. You need to know how long you want the throttle to blip to help it sync. This is going to be more a road race thing that I don't have any experience with, so I'm not going to talk about it other than it is an option. So uh, more probably for sequentials than anything. People that need to rev match, keep it as smooth as possible. Not something that I bothered with in a drag race application, so I can't really say how that should or shouldn't work. Anyways, guys, that wraps up the shift cut. I hope it makes sense. I hope it kind of gives you some ideas on what you need to do. There are multiple types of uh, knobs that you can buy. There are multiple shifter bases. I'm using a Honda, so obviously it's well supported. There's lots of options that way. The knob that I use is universal. Um, I can't remember the brand off and I think it's Race Tech, probably saying the wrong one. Um, I know Speed Factory sells them. Lots of people sell them. Uh, even Honda sells them. So you can you can get the knob from your favorite vendor. Uh, support the shops that support you, whoever it might be. 
Um, but anyway, it's a item that is readily available. KA Sensors also sells them. So if this is tech that you like, please hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, take the time to consider doing so. I try to get content at least weekly, if not a couple times a week. During race season, of course, that can change. If you have a friend that might like this, consider sharing it with them. Share it in your group, wherever it might benefit the people around you in your race community. And hit the bell icon if you need notified as new content is added. I do cover lots of cars. It's not just Hondas, Mitsus, Toyotas, Subaru, whatever, Nissan. We try to cover as much as we can uh, because basically they all work the same. The accent, if you will, might be different, but they're all speaking the same language. Anyway, guys, take care. We'll talk to you later.